Hey, it's been a while since we've hunted with John from Fossil Junkies. So today is that day. Um, we're going to dive in. Actually, we already did. It was good enough for a video. Let's go. All right. Let's do this. Alright, check it out. We got quite a few tigers on this trip. That's not something that I've ever really found a lot of. Um, the colors are pretty cool. We got a little green there, a little lightning strike. I don't know how to pronounce it right, but I think it's a retro re retroflex. I only have two of these in my collection. They're just uh, I think they're more recent. They're not as old as the uh, Astalis. I think I'm not 100% sure, but. You know, you just don't find them like that out here in Lee County. It's a really, really nice tooth. Second one to add to the collection. Real happy with that one. There's good teeth, there's good teeth. You try it out. You coming? <laughs> you just record that gator? <laughs> He's beelining straight to you. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, that's a pretty one. Very good condition, very nice for that. That's a keeper.
I was so excited I forgot to turn the audio on. Um, but this is a sloth claw. They would actually, it's pretty incredible just how huge these things are. And they can be, gone like this big? Does that seem about right? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a sloth claw, and it's my first sloth claw, so I was pretty excited to pick up this. I thought it was a bone just looking at it, grabbed it, picked it up, and I saw this pockets in the back and knew instantly, oh my gosh, I think I finally have one. And that is a very nice sloth claw. And you found something, John, that might be associated? Yep. Um, Check it out. You came up with that sloth claw, and then... Biggest sloth tooth I've ever found. Yeah, that's pretty. Right after that next dive. So, to me, you don't find a lot of this material everywhere, so I would just assume, it might not be true, but I would just assume that this might be associated with his sloth claw. They were John just got done pulling the anchor, and there's a tooth in it. So you can see how high density gravel this is where we are at. There was a tooth is that in the gravel. It's actually a meg, too. Yep, it's a meg. <laughs> Raglid on. That's crazy. Hey, quick commercial. Thank you for supporting this channel. We've activated the thanks button in the lower right corner of the video. You can click there and give directly to us, or better yet, Christmas is nearly here. We do have a store, and our most popular item is the gravel pack. Please order now so that we can get these to you before Christmas. The link for these is down below the video in the description. All right, we're gonna connect with Jonathan from Digging Science for a lot more knowledge around this sloth claw. Jonathan has been putting videos together for years and they're starting to take the form of true adventure TV shows, basically. He's been able to take his videos to a higher level with his incredible knowledge of paleontology and geology. All right, hey Jonathan. <laughs> hey, stop, how's it going, man? How you doing? Doing good, man. How you doing? Well, you've well, you gotta be doing good it. if you found a sloth claw, so. <laughs> You've seen it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to lean on point. you to tell me anything you can about this because you know a lot about this stuff. I wouldn't say a lot. I would say, though, the first thing is that claw did not come from a small animal. And the crazy thing about that, too, is it didn't even come from the biggest of giant ground sloths. So I think based on the area you found it in, it's probably Paramylodon or Megalonyx. It's hard to tell the difference just from one claw. Uh-oh, you froze. Oh no, do we drop? Stop froze. But I'll still get the footage, so. Hmm. Do I stop recording? You might not even see this. I could say anything about stop right now. And since he dropped the meeting, he probably won't go through this long bit of footage. But if he does, that'd be hilarious. And I kind of hope he does, or doesn't. Stop's really been hitting the gym. He's getting really buff, but he's kind of among the shorter side of the fossil hunters. That's why he got into scuba diving. He couldn't do any of the free diving because it couldn't stand up in the rivers. Really hope he doesn't see this bit. If he does, YouTube gold. All right, so we have Stop back. back. And <laughs> as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> you either found a Paramylodon or a Megalonyx claw. Those are the two most likely ones. Now... If it's Megalonyx, that'd be cool. Do you have the claw? Hold it up. So this claw, if it is Megalonyx, was actually found by Thomas Jefferson. Not this one specifically, obviously, but he thought it belonged to an extinct lion. Um, it wasn't until <laughs> some time later they figured out it was a ground sloth claw, but it's a cool little piece of history. Now, the size of this claw isn't the whole size of the digit, if you could believe it. First of all, it represents this tiny little bit of the finger to us mm -hmm. and they would have had the same nail sheathing that would be let's do this whole fish game get your claw out <laughs> and let's see put your hand in front of the tip now start moving your hand away and now <laughs> stop so that's right. probably about the full size of the actual claw with the nail sheathing which is just wild when you think about it got it so we go over it like this right here yep and what is it six inches your claw um, man, I don't remember what it was, but yeah, it looks like about six inches. I don't know the exact measurement. So what's crazy is Remetherium, which is the largest ground sloth we have in Florida and in North America in general, the biggest claw they ever found from that was found in Ruskin, Florida, and it was two feet long. 
So <laughs> as crazy as that claw is, there's even bigger animals than that bad boy. So with the she thing, it would be even longer, three plus? Yeah, the she thing would be like three feet long, which is just Can insane imagine a creature for like that. that digit. Well, it's a specialized digit, right? They didn't evolve to be big just because it was cool. It evolved because they were <laughs> able to reach out from the ground, grab branches from up high, and bring them down to it themselves. So they're basically like, you ever played that claw game at like a Walmart, and you grab stuff and bring it up? The claw. Yeah, like, <laughs> you can, you can. <laughs> basically, that was what the claws were evolved to do. They would go up, grab, bring it down, and eat it. Kind of like a giraffe neck, but for your hands. All right, so... I think you proved my point though, even though you're being modest about it, that you know a lot about these things and that's what makes your videos so great. Stop shaking your head. Anyway. You, you um, know as much as anybody. The more you learn about paleontology, the more you learn you don't know. And that's why it's such yeah. a cool thing to get into. Yeah. Uh, so tell me more really about what you guys are doing. You moved out of Florida. What's going on? What should we expect? Yeah, we're living in Savannah, Georgia. We just bought a house. Um, we're planning. Yeah, thank you. I'm working a full-time job right now as a geophysicist, got to pay them bills, but we're able to buy more equipment, replace our camera, get new lenses, and the plan is to do that for a while and slowly position myself where I could do digging science full-time. So we're trying to build up our assets and I've got a YouTube studio. Our new house has a 400-foot workshop in the back. It's got no walls right now on the inside, but we're going to turn that into a YouTube studio try to make more educational content, and then add that education side even more to our regular adventure videos. So, hey, that's perfect. Yeah, and we've got our, our new boat, the, the 1444, that we can take out in open water, and we're just really excited for what the future has to hold. A lot more fossil hunting <laughs> in different places, hopefully. Hey, people don't understand how things can go wrong. Hey, can you tell me, or tell them, I should say, about what just happened to you the last time you went out? Oh yeah, the last time I went out, I lost my entire dive helmet with all my dive lights and my GoPro. And the GoPro had footage from a, a really cool find that I'm still going to talk about later, so I'm not going to uh, say that right now. So you might have to just okay. go over and watch my YouTube channel. Who knows? But <laughs> I lost all that, although I did get in contact with uh, Big Blue, who provides my dive lights. Amazing lights, and they're hooking me back up. And so I can't wait to use those lights more in my videos and highlight how very useful. I know you use big blue lights too. Yeah. They're great. I'm consistently, that's really all I use because the first ones I use would just shut off while I was diving. <laughs> it's not, it's not no, very fun. No, but um, we got a lot to look forward to. It's going to be definitely a grind, especially working full time, but it'll hopefully put us yeah. in a position where we get to make better videos more often in the future. So, got a lot to look forward great. to. Great. Well, I appreciate you dropping in. Of course. I think I'll go ahead and close out this video, but. For those of you who have not checked out his videos, um, you're way behind the ball on this. <laughs> Check out Digging Science. Um, they're just getting better and better, and they're really turning into almost, I would call it a TV show. And I think that might be the future of all this. All right. I appreciate Thank you, Jonathan. Stop. Thanks for having me. As always, keep yeah. on digging science. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the tagline. Yep. See you, man.